Hello everybody, my name is Jake Chun and welcome to my case study presentation. Today my presentation will be on Google's involvement with the military. We will be primarily focusing on two main interactions between Google and the US military. So first up, we are going to be talking about Project Maven, which Google received a lot of backlash on in 2018. We will be talking about uh, Google's involvement and uh, the outcomes of their involvement with Project Maven. Uh, more will be said on that later. And then we will be moving on to the next occurrence, which is Joint Warfighting Cloud Capability, abbreviated as JWCC, which uh, has been mentioned in 2021 and is still ongoing. We will be talking about Google's potential involvement and whether or not it will be any different or the terms will be any different than Project Maven. Now let's talk about Project Maven. Project Maven was a contract between Google and the Department of Defense in 2018. Uh, the Department of Defense wanted help with their drone targeting systems and Google had AI technology to help review an abundance of footage that could improve these targeting systems. But uh, there are some immediate concerns that come along with this. So if uh, drones are able to target uh, people with AI, it could create autonomous, essentially killing machines uh, that are able to provide lethal force without any interaction with any humans, or rather without any humans operating this lethal force. For months, over thousands of Google employees protested Project Maven, and almost a dozen even quit their jobs over this issue. Google had an internal petition that objected to them being a part of a business of war. Google company officials responded to this petition with the claim that Project Maven was not offensive in nature. However, Project Maven uh, uses Google's AI to improve uh, data analysis from this drone imagery and this analysis is used with some lethal drones uh, so indirectly it is actually quite offensive uh, and this overall outrage led to Google officials deciding that Google will not be renewing the contract with the Department of Defense and which uh, then led Google to establish a set of AI principles dictating how Google will use uh, AI in regards to any uh, AI implementations they will be doing uh, in the future. Now, let's talk about the Joint Warfighting Cloud capability. This is the next section of Google's involvement with the military that I will touch on. So the Joint Water Fighting Cloud capability, or as abbreviated JWCC, is a new government contract that was announced in 2021, aiming to sign with multiple uh, vendors. So these vendors are gonna be Amazon Web Services, Google, Microsoft, and Oracle. Um, the bidding has not taken place yet. It's going to happen uh, this December of 2022. Um, so Google's involvement would include creating uh, some custom AI, AI to help with uh, mission work, not necessarily lethal mission work. It, um, according to Google's new AI guidelines that would go against um, their principles. So um, it is being portrayed as non-lethal. Um, also since then, the DOD have created their own set of AI principles and uh, using AI would go against their principles as well. Um, some of these uh, tasks that are being claimed to that AI would help with is resource allocation, security improvements, much more. Um, so, however, there are some concerns of JWCC. Um, since Project Maven, uh, Google has become much more uh, restricted, restrictive with what information they tell their employees and the public. So, um, if Google is having the same level of involvement with Lethal Force that they were having with Project Maven, it is very unlikely for the same level of protest to result that occurred with Project Maven. Um, and some people of the public and even Google 
employees themselves have concerns that Google AI's principles were just to calm protests uh, and not rather to actually have a sense a solid set of moral guides. So since um, this goes in tandem with uh, how Google it's more restrictive with what information they release, um, nobody would be able to know. So these set of principles could really mean nothing. And in reality, what's going on behind the scenes uh, with uh, their contract with the or their potential contract with the DOD, uh, they could be contributing to assisting lethal force development. Now let's take a look at how applied science was involved in both Project Maven and joint warfighting cloud capability. So first, in Project Maven, we have the Google employees. So one type of employee that was involved was computer scientists. So these people would actually build the AIs uh, that would help these drone targeting systems uh, identify simple objects like cars or people. Um, next, we have the data scientists. So these people would look at the data gathered from the AIs or help um, look at the raw data to feed into these AIs and along with any, many other types of engineers. So then we have the joint warfighting cloud capability. We have the sim similar employee positions that were involved with Project Maven, like computer science and data scientists that could potentially be involved uh, with this contract. But there are also some additional positions. Uh, so with capital uh, allocation, we could have some logistical engineers and uh, with um, some security standards with the military, we could have uh, cybersecurity engineers helping with that. Now, let's look at the morality of both Project Maven and JWCC. So starting with the morally bad, we have Google contributing to the progression of lethal AI, military drone technology. So from the natural law theory, uh, I believe that I agree with this. Killing is bad. Killing is intrinsic, intrinsically bad, even including the assisting of killing. So just by creating the, even though Google is not killing themselves, they are help. They are helping assist the killing of people. So I believe this is bad. Um, and along with that, uh, even after they announced that they will not renew the contract, they still had to commit to the full eighteen months of the that the original contract had stated they were going to be signed for so i understand legally they can't just break a contract but uh they still had to perform these more these morally impermissible actions uh for the duration of the contract and again according to natural law theory uh killing is just bad so i and i agree with that uh so and then another uh, morally impermissible thing, is, I believe, is uh, that uh, Project Maven overall helped contribute to a more restrictive government at Google. Um, now, that in itself isn't morally impermissible, impermissible but uh, Google setting up the... Um, or Google expressing their intent to hide other and future morally, morally questionable acts, I do believe is morally uh, impermissible. I would like to support this claim from the perspective of consequentialism, where consequentialists think that the kind of value that's important to per is personal value, uh, meaning that, or which means value that in some way relates to the quality of people's lives. In this case, the quality of people's lives is affected by the transparency of this large corporation, Google, that uh, is essentially gatekeeping information that has to do with public uh, well-being. Now let's look at the morally bad aspects of the joint warfighting cloud capability. So as previously stated uh, with Project Maven, an outcome of it that I believe is morally wrong is for it to have a more restrictive environment, or I mean Google to have a more restrictive environment uh, where less information flow to the public and employees is being created uh, in regards to potentially um, lethal force. Uh, so going into JWCC, even though it hasn't happened yet, we can apply the same 
uh, logic here. So I think it is morally wrong for these large corporations to hide these potentially lethal comp, uh, technologies, uh, even though uh, they do not claim for it to have it. They have already set up ways to hide uh, this information from coming out. So the lack of transparency here uh, from these uh, large corporations that could have these lethal technologies. And again, this is from the perspective of consequentialism. Although uh, Project Maven and the JWCC contract both have bad, morally bad uh, aspects to them, they also have some morally good aspects to them, and let's explore those. Starting off with Project Maven, a morally good aspect to it was Google employees protesting morally impermissible behavior. Um, so when employees found out that they could be contributing or their company they're working for could be contributing to deaths of people via uh, AI technology, they're uh, helping the military improve, they, they started protesting. And this goes again with the natural law theory where they were helping aid preservation of human life and i believe this is accurate as well um some of these google employees even went as far as to quit their jobs in protest um same thing with natural law theory they're uh in this case though they're refusing to aid the technology that has the power to end human life so they're completely uh they're not they're not talking uh they're just cutting off ties with the company completely uh, and another one is Google would eventually cease their involvement with the Project Maven. So even though it isn't ideal that they have to continue this, uh, they do they did set a deadline. A deadline. So uh, Project Maven would eventually come to an end. And again, with the natural law theory, it's helping preserve human life, even though it isn't immediate in this case, but it still is. Um, and I do agree with how the natural law theory applies here. Um, and then uh, from the aftermath of Project Maven, um, Google did create a set of AI principles to outline their use of AI for the future. So <clears throat> I think a good comparison to this is the formula of humanity from Kantianism, so, uh, which states that, so act that you use humanity in your own person as well as in the person of any other, always at the same time as an end, never merely as, an, as a means. So in this case, uh, Google is creating a set of principles that take into account of humanity and what not just their own personal desires or benefit, but rather the benefit of the human race, everyone. I would also like to note that um, for the point that uh, some Google employees quit their jobs in protest, although I view it as morally good that these Google employees quit their jobs, in protest, I do not believe it was necessarily morally obligated for them to do so. There are other circumstances to consider, such as their employees, uh, financial situations, their families, their well beings, etc. So, now let's look at the morally good aspects to the joint war fighting cloud capability. So, uh, most of this comes from the aftermath of Project Maven. So since people are wary of the aftermath and the occurrences of Pro Project Maven, people are very wary of JWCC. And since it's another contract between Google and the military, uh, they are prepared to look out for uh, potentially uh, lethal technologies they, are, they could be assisting in development with. Um, so this is good in my opinion or morally good in my opinion due to the natural law theory which i agree with in this case so uh people are just showing that they are concerned about human life so let's summarize the raised moral principles and values of project maven and the jwcc so first is it morally permissible for companies to aid lethal force ai technology or is it okay for companies to be involved in war efforts i would say no I'm arguing no. Even though workers at Google are not directly killing people, the company and those working on these systems would still be guilty for the lives that it helped take. 
Um, this is, of course, again, based on the natural law theory, killing is bad. Another good question, or another raised moral pr principle in value, is should a, a company be obligated to inform its employees or the public of its involvement with lethal force? Uh, I do believe that it should be an obligation of companies to be transparent with employees and the public about their involvement with lethal, lethal force development, especially in this case where Google has created a history of uh, being involved with lethal force development. Um, yeah, if Google if Google for, if Google creates their environment where information uh, regarding the well-being of people cannot be attained, then uh, wrongdoing can not be corrected by public opinion. And this is supported by consequentialism, where uh, the lack of transparency transparency affects personal value, where personal value in this case is the well-being of people. Now, let's look at if Google was held accountable or not for their actions with Project Maven. So, uh, overall, the repercussions of Project Maven were not too grand. Um, sure, they did have some loss of protesting employees. Uh, they did have a temporary hit of reputation, and then they had an inability to renew Pro Project Maven without a PR hit, meaning that um, if they were to renew it, they did have that option technically, but they would have to suffer a large PR hit from it. Uh, overall, in the grand scheme of the th grand scheme of things, these are very insignificant. So I would overall say that Google was not held accountable for Project Maven's actions. Now let's look at who did uh, a good job and who did a bad job when it comes to Project Maven. Uh, so the reactions with the Google employees were very satisfactory when it comes to acting morally good. Uh, they did protest, some quit their jobs, and overall were very vocal about the wrongdoings at Google. However, there were those that did poorly. Um, these people were the scientists advising the Google executives, or if the executives themselves were the scientists, uh, these people did not do their job uh, very well. And when I say they did not do their job very well, I mean they could have done better morally, not necessarily their performance in their job. So let's look at what these scientists that were advising the executives could have done better. Um, the scientists that act poorly advising the executives in regards to Project Maven could have recommended uh, just to not get involved with the military proje project. They should have argued that killing is morally impermissible uh, and by assisting in developing technologies that would aid the harm of people, even if it's not the entire mission of Project Maven, we would be partially to blame for the created harm thus making us perform a morally impermissible act. And this, of course, is b based on the natural law theory, which uh, values human life, thus killing is bad. Now, I just made an argument to what the scientists advising these executives could have done better, but there are other perspectives as well. Um, obviously, since um, they did decide to begin Project Maven and, and sign the contract, uh, one counter-argument could be that... Uh, from a rational egoist perspective that as an American the preservation of the United States of America is of extreme importance and that this is within reason uh, just to sacrifice some people with our advanced military technology to ensure a stable country so they would be arguing that um, Project Maven is justified in order to preserve America and I would not agree with this I would respond to this counter argument with um, that even though we could have a potentially more secure country with this technology, by developing it, um, we are putting this technology out there and potentially it could be stolen by other company, countries. Other countries could um, uh, take what we have created and suddenly the U.S. is not as secure as it once was. This technology could harm us as well as help us. Um, along with that logical argument, um, uh, the argument, the counter argument does not take into account the intrinsic value of human life in that the, the life of an American holds no greater merit than the life of anyone else, regardless of nationality. And to wrap up, Project Maven involved assisting in morally impermissible acts leading to other morally wrong practices like lack of transparency when potentially handling lethal force, such as with the joint warfighting cloud capability. 
I hope this presentation was informative and thank you for listening.